Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
sets um, some Janice Loves and Edmund Penny songs. And now I talked about that a little bit earlier. Janice Loves stayed with her for a while, as I said, and Edmund Penny was Janice's son. But, but they both were monumental in inspiring Margaret Moss to move to Los Angeles. Um, she originally moved there so that she could write new movie music. That was her plan and her goal. And then she wound up working at the Inner City Theater, Repertory Theater, and um, she was a music director there. And she had several uh, famous well-known students, and they put on productions of, 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 of well-known operas. Um, but this particular cycle is called the Potpourri Songs. And there were um, five songs in the set. They are sacred in, in, um, in nature, and they are called Will There Be Enough? Uh, Touch the Hem of His Garment, Bright Star, No Man Has Seen His Face, and Go Back to Indiana. And this song cycle is located at the Library of Congress um, in Washington, D.C. They do have this. Um, and I think they're trying to locate the manuscript for me right now, so I'm hoping to get copies of it. I did, however, find one um, uh, manuscript, No Man Saw His Face, and um, that was housed at the Juilliard Case and Library. And um, Lindsay, would you be able to play just the first couple of measures of this? Would that be possible? Um, and you can see the text here. It's, it's
you mention about her, her uh, collaboration with Toy Harper? No, I don't. I've heard the name, um, but I don't have any information about that, unfortunately. I was hoping that you could give me some comfort. Mrs. Holloman talks about Toy Harper in, her, in the last uh, right? in the video. Oh, yeah, wonderful. she talked about how she knew Toy Harper okay. and met her. Well, clearly she knows her because she collaborated with her, but I, I didn't, didn't know. The, the story Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Holloman was telling was that she worked for Langston Hughes. And so when she was in the kitchen, they would hear and talk to Toy Harper. And she would she was singing tunes and, and Langston Hughes, I mean, and Hall Johnson transcribed some of the things and, and put it to Toy Harper. So I'll, I'll share that, the, the video links with you all okay. on what she says about Toy Harper. Yeah, I would like to ask, um, you mentioned that the Center for Black Music Research permitted you to copy just a few measures of the musical theater songs. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering why they restricted you to that and other stores they... Well, I believe that all archival libraries yeah. are restricted oh by law yeah. Um, yeah. when the pieces are unpublished. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Because the pieces are, were never published officially, um, they can't allow researchers to make copies. Yeah. Um, but there's a, something called the Fair Use Act, right. and what that is, is, is it was set up for researchers for, for um, academia, whereby people could come into these libraries and take 10% of each work, and you can publish that. So, for example, I'll have 10% of each of these songs published in this dissertation that, that will be out by August. Um, so at least people will be able to see the music, and if they want to go to the libraries and, and help and aid in getting these published, they can. But that's the reason. Mm -hmm. It's it's a legality, I believe, and they're not allowed to allow to to um, give us the, the copies. So the best thing is, I think, to find somebody who has those, and I don't know who does. But that was part of the Helen Walker Hill collection. Um, right. That's there. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know how you came to this dissertation. How did I come to this dissertation? Uh, well, wow, that's a multifaceted question with a multifaceted answer. <laughs> Um, number one, I love the piece that I just sang. Um, it's one of my favorite spirituals, and um, it's something that I've sung for many years. And so my interest was sparked through her spiritual arrangements. Um, I, I enjoy singing spirituals a great deal. They're probably some of my favorite art songs to sing. And so my original um, thought was to do a dissertation on African American spirituals and um, and do research on how they can help um, and aid in mobile technique. But that, that wasn't, I guess they didn't like that. So, <laughs> so we, we threw that topic out and, and then I decided to just write about a composer of African-American spirituals. And I heard some of her songs, um, The Three Dream Portraits, and, and then began to do some more reading. And um, I'm also a jazz lover. And when I realized that she wrote jazz pieces, she wrote art songs, spirituals, then I was just hooked. I, I really wanted to do the research and find out about who she was because it seemed that she um, had a passion for the same things that I did. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Any other questions? I think just for the record uh, and, and for uh, uh, posterity, um, very logically, we would look to her, her estate for rights on this sort of thing, but of course, her, her sole heir has passed away. I don't know that Diane had any, any Dion children. Dion never married, and she didn't have any children. And so that's so what, it's, it's, it's improper it, it, with the state of New York right now. Yeah, okay, well that's good to know. Yeah. Because we, 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 I've already checked on that. Yeah, good. Um, otherwise, we have to wait until yes. this falls out of copyright right. uh, in, in order to get things published. Yeah. Right. Yeah, which won't be There's enough. A long time. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But that is the good so, news. There is some movement in terms of. Um, I, I, I actually have been working with Theodore Presser, who pre who did her um, spiritual set, the ones I gave you recently, and so they actually have their lawyers working with the state of New York because they did. I notified them that Dion Richardson had passed. They didn't know, oh, wow. and I knew that they would have to give royalties to somebody. So that that would get them going on that track. That was my thought. As I said, okay, they're not going to let this sit because they're going to have to do something with it. And they knew that, so they are they're looking for it, okay. and they're working with the attorney general. They said. Okay, wonderful. Um, and you know, I know that Helen Walker Hill has a, a you know a lot of these manuscripts, mm -hmm. not all of them, but quite a few of them. Yeah. So that's somebody that you could also contact. And 
we spoke with this morning, wonderfully so. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, any other questions about anything concerning her life or solo vocal works? Well, I thank you so much. This was an honor for me to present this today, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I hope you will take something from it. We thank you for your time. Thank you.